Hello Milky friends, it is Milkstool here with you for another Idol Heroes video. It has been a while since we last spoke. <laughs> and that is because yours truly is day... What is it? Three weeks, one day. Day 16 of employment. Yes, everyone, I finally got a job after over 90 days of unemployment. And what glorious 90 days they were was me just sitting around playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Not that I've stopped playing Call of Duty. Uh, I'm well progressed in Season 4. In fact, I've nearly, I've actually nearly finished the, the Battle Pass. I'm on level 90. But I know most of you don't play that because you're too busy and engrossed with Idle Heroes and you've probably spent all your money on this. Anyway, I'm back making this very much delayed video. Uh, this is just going to be my perspective on value for this week's event, though so the July growth plan, which is phenomenal value, uh, the puppets. I'm not going to talk about Rogan because <laughs> I'm shit at testing characters. I half summoned for Rogan when I just read about the stats, but then when I saw the testing, it was kind of shit. Moral of the story is never summon for a new hero until someone with much deeper pockets than me or you actually does it and tests it. So Barry and GDP, they do a phenomenal job. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about value because I usually have contrarian views about value which I think most of you come to me for so I'm going to share those with you and then I'm going to talk about where I'm at with my I guess account and how I'm thinking about building my playing the game building my account going forward so I'm going to do those two things with you today so let's do the first thing value which is what the most of you are here for and you'll probably all tune out after this so the first thing to go over I guess is the July growth plan there's just really no point in doing the math behind this because it's just stupid value, right? So if you don't pay 30 bucks, you're going to get all the basic rewards, which is in itself phenomenal. But if you pay 30 bucks, you get all the bonus rewards. So you're all probably asking, well, Milkstool, is it worth paying $30? Like most of us don't even really need to do the math to understand it is worth it. But you, just in case you're just wondering what value you're talking about. So you get 10,000 gems over 30 days. Um, if you do, you know, your daily tasks, which you will do, you get 16 five-star heroes, you get 50 feathers, you get one uh, box of 50 skins, which is five skins, which you can fuse to get uh, a limited skin. Uh, and then you get two six-star puppets. And so when you convert all that to the equivalent number of gems based on these numbers, so a gem converts one for one, so 10,000 times one. Uh, five-star, usual number that I use, it's 400. For me, a uh, normal five-star is worth 400 gems uh, as a minimum because every day when I smash event raid, right? Uh, it cost me 50 gems and, oh, you can't see it there because I buy it every single day. It cost me 50 gems and uh, it gets me an extra, basically one of these four star hero shards. I need eight of them to make fuse together and make into a five star. I don't count the three star heroes because they're worth shit and nothing. So eight times 50 is 400. So if you're wondering still how I get the 400, that's high value, just normal five star heroes at uh, 400 gems a piece. You could argue Cthulhu's are worth a bit more, but I'm being super conservative here, right? All four star, five star heroes to me are worth 400 gems, unless they're like truly, truly exceptional tier one must have heroes like Carrie or Sherlock, right? Feathers are worth 48 gems per feather to me, and that's based on campaign. So if you're a long time viewer, you know how I convert. Uh, I guess how I get a gem value for skins and feathers. Basically, during a campaign week. Uh, I look at Heroic Scroll, uh, and Heroic Scroll costs 125 gems in real life from Aspen Dungeon or the Marketplace, but also costs 100 of the campaign currency. So using that 100 campaign currency to 125 gems, I get g equivalent gem values for all the other things during campaign week. The pay-to-win artifact, the Light Dark Hero, the Elite Light Dark Hero, like Gustin, Garuda, Sherlock, uh, the non-Elite Light Dark Hero, so like for example, Kathuga, the the math is saying 2875, but like I said, to me, it's only worth 400. The limited skin, which is worth five normal skins, and you get 1875, etc., etc., right? So I will leave a link to this spreadsheet, and I promise I'll do it this time, <laughs> to the guy that keeps asking for it. I didn't do it last time, I apologize. Um, that's how I get the 1875. And then six-star puppets, you get two of those in the July growth plan, and that is worth 3,000 per six-star puppet, because in a six-star puppet, you're going to get six heroes, uh, and each of those are worth, sorry, 400, not 500. So each six-star puppet is six five-star heroes times 400 gems per five-star hero. And so each six-star puppet is therefore worth 2,400 
gems thereabouts. So now you get the July growth plan. When you convert everything to gems, it's about 25,000 gems, right? And then when you can do it on a dollars per gem basis, because that's how I convert, compare all the value packs, um, it's about 0.11 of a cent, right? And so that's basically up there when you look at all the other value packs that you can buy in terms of historically speaking, right? The fourth anniversary card, if I move this over a smidge, the fourth anniversary card was the best value uh, thing out there so far, bar the diamond fund. The diamond fund, you can get it for basically 0.05 of a cent per gem, that's how much it's worth, and that's just stupid value, right? The VIP monthly card, which everyone usually acknowledges as the best value is 0.13 of a cent per gem, uh, and then fourth anniversary card, like I said, was 0.11 of a cent per gem, and after the fourth anniversary card, and much better value, well, not significantly better value, but better value than a VIP monthly card is the July growth plan, which comes in about 0.12 of a cent per gem, right? So I'm just assuming you've all bought it, right? As just a matter of course. If they keep offering these monthly growth plans, honestly, I don't think they will because then everyone would just stop buying the monthly VIP card. Everyone would just buy the growth plan because it's just so much better value. Um, anyway, that's the, the $30 growth plan. Hopefully they offer it every month. I mean, look, if you want to get another $30 out of me every month, I will buy that growth plan every single month. I don't think they will. But you never know, right? They're doing crazy things. So the next thing we need to talk about is... Oh, we've lost connection with the game server. The next thing we need to talk about are the different $100 value packages that you can buy this week, right? So this is just purely for whales. Uh, and I know there's probably like one of you that watches my channel. Or maybe none of you, right? So we're looking at the different $100 packages that you can buy this week. Um, only because they've offered this... They threw this curveball in this week where they've offered this puppet package, right? Where you can, for 100 bucks, you can get 5,000 gems, 120 scrolls, uh, or an, and a nine-star puppet, right? So then you're probably answering well, yourself, well, I only really have $100. Should I buy this one? Or should I buy uh, this one with the key, the palace key, to get me more crystals? Uh, so if you go here, you get 15 crystals. Uh, and then the other thing is, well, I can just buy the monthly pack, which gets me basically... 5,000 gems and a puppet, nine star puppet. And instead of the 120 scrolls, I get this replacement stone, right? So which one should I buy? And this is where the math is going to get a bit controversial, right? So I just got to do a little adjustment, right? So the puppet pack, you get 5,000 gems, 120 scrolls, one nine star puppet. A nine star puppet is about 28 five star heroes. 28 times 400 is 11,200. So one nine star puppet is worth 11,200 gems, right? Scrolls are worth 125 gems each. I've already discussed that. Um, that is, you get that basically from Aspen Dungeon and the, the marketplace, right? Gems are one for one, right? Uh, so the puppet package, when you convert everything to equivalent gem spaces, it comes out at 0.3 of a cent per gem, which is okay, right? It's not the best, but it's okay. Cause usually when we look at the history of those special packages, right? We're looking for outstanding value somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 of a cent. This is borderline okay. Cause it's like 0.3 to a cent, right? But if you look historically at everything you could have bought and where this puppet pack stacks up, it's, 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 it's in between there. It's not the best value. Uh, I mean, <sighs> There was something called Puppet's Attic, and I forget what the hell that was for <laughs> a while back. There's nothing really to compare it to except the past packages, right? So where you convert everything in gems, and then you could have calculate the dollars per gem thing. Really, it's up to you, right? So if you had 100 bucks to spend, it's really down to a couple of things. It's really down to basically, let's just, let's just acknowledge universally that that monthly nine-star puppet pack, so basically this one, is the worst value out of all the $100 packs you can buy this week, right? It's about 0.6 of a cent per gem, right? That's just purely for whales that have way too much money. So then now really comes down to puppet pack. Uh, and so basically it comes down to buying either this one or basically, uh, where are we going? Where are we going? This one, right? So then it's a question of how do you value the key? Right, because the key, what the key gets you is effectively 15 more crystals, and you need 10 crystals to basically swap out a hero. Right, so you, now you're asking, well, how much are 10, 15 crystals worth? And so, this is 
this is where it's going to get controversial, right? This is how I valued it. And you're going to be like, Melksil, that's just complete bullshit. I completely disagree with you. And I'm open to hearing other ways to value this key. But for me, this is kind of like a free... If you fucked up, let's say you fucked up, right? Okay, so let's say this week I spent 500 scrolls, right? I've spent 500 scrolls to basically get two copies of Rogan, right? You could argue that because I fucked up, then... But now, because I have these crystals, I have 20 of these crystals, meaning I can swap out my two Rogans for the next hero after. Those 15 palace, what are they called? Eternal crystals are then therefore worth three quarters of 500 times 125. Do you see the logic? I get another shot next time Hero Summons comes around to get the new hero. Three quarters of the, oh, well, Yes, three quarters of two new heroes, if that kind of makes sense. Because I, I, because I, I spent 400 scrolls now, or 500 scrolls, um, plus the 100 bucks. It's, the 100 bucks is kind of like, that, that, what, that key is kind of like a do-over. Like, you get a, a second chance. You get another 500 scrolls the next time to basically get those new heroes. And so that's how I've basically kind of valued it, right? It's not exactly right, but that's how I'm thinking about it when I value the key. It's probably worth than 46,000. So here's the math, right? So I said that one key, it's 125 gems per scroll times 500 scroll because it's a do-over, right? So the next time a new hero comes around, I have to do another 500 theoretically, if I didn't have a key, to get two copies of the new hero. But now because I have enough eternal crystals, because I bought the key, I say 500 scrolls, right? Well, not technically 500. I say three quarters of them because I have five universal crystals the key gets me another three quarters another 15 crystals if that makes sense right so it's three quarters times 500 times 125 and so you get this really stupid number of 46,875 because that's how much scrolls if you were to buy 500 scrolls or what three quarters of them right three quarters of the which is like what 100 375 what's three quarters of three by four times 500 fuck I'm bad at math Yeah, 375. So 375 times 125 is 46,875 gems. That's how much the 375 scrolls are worth. It's a lot, right? Now, you could argue, well, Milkstool, you don't get, like, for example, um, you don't get... You only get the heroes. You don't get when you do the summons, right? You could argue, Milkstool, you don't get the... What is it? Uh... 9, 12 profit orbs and you don't get the this swap thing which we don't give a shit about you don't get this hero uh, and you don't get the 30 scrolls uh, or and you don't get the 15 feathers fine so let's just take away those things from the 46,875 so if we do that then we take away 30 uh what do we get? 30 scrolls times 125 scrolls a piece minus, what is it? How many profit orbs is it? So, uh, 9, 12 times 500. 12 times, is it 500 or 450 we're using? Fuck it, we'll just use 500. Uh, minus the feathers, which is 15 times 48. 15 times 48. Take away, how many heroes do we get? We get this one hero. So, 500, right? 500 so that leaves us with a grand total of 35,905 gems worth of uh, that, that 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 key is worth right because in effect you're getting this rogan um plus you have to do at least 500 let's just say you're fucking terrible luck which everyone does uh and when you do the summons thing you have to get five well when you hit five, you have to do all 500 to to get this right fine that's that's what it's based on, right? Worst case scenario. So then, even then, you're gonna get a stupidly large value. It basically says the hundred dollar scroll. So if you believe all that logic that I just threw at you, right? Then this hundred dollar scroll package with the key is worth fifty five thousand nine hundred five gems, which makes it much better value. Basically, twice as good as value as a puppet pack, right? So basically, all I'm saying is the key. And I didn't realize it until I did the math. The key fundamentally changes the value of this pack, right? I, I, I took it for granted how much this key was worth until I actually did the numbers. 
because like I said, it's effectively worth and you got to do it out for all the scenarios, right? I only bought one of these. It changes, the math completely changes when you do, uh, uh, if you can hear my dog, I apologize. <laughs> the math completely changes if you're doing like multiple loops because here you need like what, two, three, does it? No, the math stays the same. So each pack you buy, you got to do another 500 loops. Yeah, the, ma the math kind of scales if you do more loops and you buy more packs. Um, but anyway, that's that's how I'm thinking about the hundred dollar packages this week. So if you had a hundred bucks, I would absolutely do the 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 buy this over the puppet pack. It really depends on where you are, right? Like I said, this is borderline this puppet package. I, like I said, it's somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 of a cent is where value is, and this is just on the border, right? But when you consider what the key gets you, right? Considering Rogan isn't even that good this week, right? but you have like up to four chances um, of getting the next best hero. So I think basically this key, those crystals and me swapping out Rogan is good until basically the light hero in Christmas. Or is it light hero? No, dark hero at Christmas. So that's how I'm thinking about it. If you had a hundred bucks, if you buy my logic, buy the hundred dollar scores package. If you think I'm talking BS, buy the puppet package as the next best one. That's if you found a hundred dollars and you felt compelled to spend it this particular week, right? So that's a hundred dollar package. Now let's talk about the market of magic, which is I think the next big question that most people are asking. Uh, should I buy, should I use my relics, my feathers to buy the hundred dollar, well, any of these, right? So straight off the bat, I don't know the answer. I cannot tell you, but if you had to, if, if, if you were going down that path, if you were going down that path, spend on the 10 star one, do not spend on the nine star one. They are not the same thing. Like when you do out the math, right? So a 10 star puppet is actually worth more five star heroes, 64, right? Two times 28 is 56. So this 10 star one, you're getting eight more five star heroes. That's 4,000 gems different. So when you do out the math and you do it on a, either five star, what you get in terms of five star per feather or gems per feather, you're getting 14% more value per feather with the 10 star puppet. So if you were gonna absolutely spend on one of these, buy the 10 star one, do not buy the nine star one, right? So that's the first thing. That's the first certain thing I can tell you. After that, in terms of a question of value, it, it's a giant fucking, it depends, right? The, I, depending on where you are in the game, depending on where you are in the game, like most people say you should only spend feathers on, on copies, but you could be a whale and you could be like, well, I have a ton of copies. Or even if you're not a well, if you're like me, theoretically, I have enough copies of like so many other heroes that I can build right now. Um, so for example, uh, I'm waiting for Russell to drop, but I, I there's a Mim army I want to build. Uh, I want to build Elvira up. I want to get uh, my Garuda to E5. Um, what else? I want to get my Delassium to five star, right? So I'm not running out of heroes to build and I'm not running out of copies exactly, right? Delassium, I have enough in my bag to get him to using, what, these chests here to get him to E5, right? So there's no shortage of heroes to build, right? Even, uh, let's say, Nakia, I want to get to 10 star. Russell, when he drops, I want to get 10 star and, sorry, E5. And I have a lot of feathers right now, right? So 564, take away the Russell, you get to about what, 460? There about, no, 480, 480, better math. 484, right? 484, that, that, that's enough for me to buy a couple of these puppies. Basically, I can buy two 10 star puppets, right? And get my E5 Garuda. And that's infinitely more valuable to me right now. So it's hard for me to say, do buy, don't buy. The only thing I can say is if you're going to spend the feathers, you buy the 10 star one. That's the only like certain value arbitrage I can tell you right now. But in terms of whether or not you should spend your feathers on the food this week, on your, on, on uh, artifacts, which you could last week or the week before or on copies, the order for me is absolutely artifacts first. Because like I said last time, artifacts are enduring. They last, right? Whereas heroes, copies of heroes, they you can get them through other means and they come and go, heroes, right? So that Sherlock, even though he dropped this week, which is kind of nice, right? 
uh, here. The reality is, come around Monopoly time or other events where you can get sort of those, that special hero chess, uh, basically this one here, right? See? Where you can basically get all those past heroes up to Ithaca right now. Sure, the next one of these that comes along is going to have Sherlock. You, you just, that's, that's the other way to get it, right? And then there's every chance that he's going to drop when Prophet Orbs either the next week or the following time, right? So it's a question of how rushed you are to build Sherlock in, in your lineup, right? So, yeah. but then after Sherlock, you know, they're going to release so many more heroes between now and Christmas. How long will that hero actually last, right? That's the other question you have to ask yourself as to whether or not copies are worth it. Because then if you've got all the artifacts you need or you just don't think 400 uh, feathers per artifact is worth it, right? If you don't think that's worth it and you don't think getting copies of heroes are worth it because of what I've just said, right? Because, you know, unless you're building light and dark, uh, you can get those non-light dark heroes pretty much through profit orbs um, and through those chests. Right, so if you don't, if you're not going to spend your feathers on those two things, there's really only one thing left to spend it on, and that's puppets. And I told you which one to get, which one's better value. So if you run through that logic in your head, and it's different for everyone. That's the logic I run through in my head. Do I need another artifact? Do I think it's worth it? Yeah, because it's enduring. Right, artifacts last. Heroes die out and get swapped out, but those hard artifacts stay. Um, similarly, food, food you get it over time, but they last. Right, so I'm. And this is the this is where we get into the last part of my video, where I'm at with my with my gameplay. And this is end game for like genuine end game players, right? A lot of you will never get here, right? So end game for me is basically uh, two teams of if I go to interdimensional arena, it, not two teams. It's basically three teams of full E5 heroes. Because what the fuck are you gonna do with any more E5 heroes after that? Seriously, right? I mean it's nice if you have lots of different heroes to just to build and test it out. But after you get about maybe two lineup of E5s or even three lineup, right? I would argue for most people over their lifetime, especially if you're not a whale, two, 12 E5 heroes is basically end game for you. Because after that, it's all about swapping. And that's where I'm at in, in my game right now. I'm just swapping out heroes right now. So this Tara, I basically swapped out for Asmodel, right? And so, if I when I get enough Russell copies for my second Russell, one of these Taras is going. Um, similarly, when the new Dark Hero comes, I'm not going to build that Dark Hero. I'm basically going to swap it out for either Russell or one of my Armin Ra's or my DA, right? Or if I'm going to build my third carry because I've got three copies right now, I'm going to swap it out for for uh, my DA, right? So that's where I'm at with my lineup. Right. Once I get three teams of E5, I don't really care about food anymore. And that has a big so what, because for the longest time, I've been saying food is the biggest constraint in this game. And it is for the majority of you. Um, and that's why I always tell you to buy in the tavern or an Aspen dungeon. You should always buy, not to have in the marketplace, or even uh, on Adventure Island when the merchant comes, you should always buy the orbs over scrolls, especially when you need foods. But when you have so many... Um, when you have enough, I guess, heroes, lineups, and you're at that phase where you don't really need for food, you just need to swap out existing heroes, then it's much more about getting the newest hero quicker or, or being able to do uh, get as many new heroes as quickly as possible. And that's when Scrolls comes into it. So in my meta, my, my gameplay meta, I've shifted from focusing quite heavily on food, which I still get every day, and buying profit orbs over um, Scrolls, especially in Aspen Dungeon, in the the marketplace with the merchant uh as well as the campaigns right so campaigns i used to buy my i used to get about 24 i always get about 24,000 2400 of the campaign currency and i usually always buy the eight profit orbs but now i'm just buying 24 scrolls um i need scrolls because i'm more interested now in getting the new hero because i'm replacing out my old heroes now because i have so many I have so many, I've realized. I have so many of those replacement stones. Where do I, where do I go? Where do you see them? Where do you see these beauties? 125, right? So I think you only need like five or 10. How many do you need to swap out a dude, right? So if we go here, we go here, we go here, convert, you know, into dimensional arena. That's terrible. Who is not in the interminable arena? 
convert. So you need about five of these to, to replace, uh, and you need five to regress. So I've got like, what, 20 uh, plus five more. I've got 25 swaps in replace. That's a lot. That's a fuck ton if you think about it, right? 25 swaps in replace. That's more than I need in over three years of playing. And I'm going to get more over time. That's the thing. So like I said, in terms of gameplay and where I'm at, I'm basically at the swap stage where it's it's more about scrolls, less about profit orbs. It may be different for you, right? So increasingly for end game players, it's more about scrolls than it is about profit orbs. Uh, and, and especially when you have as many of those soul stones as I do. So that's the first thing I mentioned. And if you find yourself in the same stage of the game as I am, it's increasingly important if you are swapping out heroes, replacing them, like one for one replace, right? It is increasingly important that you utilize when you do these uh, soul stone slots to buy as many of these as possible. Why is that? The reason is because if you have, it saves you pink dust, right? Because right now people are just burning through pink dust. If you unlock one of these slots or both of these slots, the chances of you getting that same stone again reduces because you cannot re-roll for any of the stones you have in any of these slots. That's the first thing you know. But secondly, if you replace a hero and one of these backup stones is the exact stone that you need, all of a sudden, Bob's your uncle. You don't need to roll for that stone anymore. And to be frank and honest, there's only a couple of soul stones that every hero uses. HP speed, HP attack, uh, attack, attack, holy attack, attack, and that's about it. So if you, your heroes have any one of those three stones, soul stones, as in any of these slots, you're set, right? You never need to roll for the stone again. Yes, it costs you about 2,000, uh, what is it? How much does it cost to open one of these fuckers up? It costs you 1,000 for the first one, I believe, right? And then I think it costs you 2,000 for the next one. So if I look at a hero that actually has more than one, uh, think Milk, still think. So if I go to, I think this guy, I did more than one. No. Yep. One of these people, one of these people have, yeah. So if I unlock that one, that's 2,000, 3,000 gems, right? 3,000 gems might sound like a lot in the long run, but if you're replacing that hero over and over again with new heroes, right? It is worth it. The amount of gold that you'll save and the amount of pink dust that you'll save and the anguish of not being able to get the right stone first off, it's worth a 3,000 investment like upfront. Just trust me on that, right? So that's where I'm at with the meta. Um, and if you're at the same stage in the meta where it's more about replacing heroes, you need to heed, you should think about that soul stone tip uh, that I'm giving you out there right now. Anyway, that's the video. It's a bit of a long one. Value, I've talked about it, shared with my you with my thoughts. Uh, it really depends on where you're up with the game. In terms of the meta, uh, it doesn't apply to all of you. That's where I'm at with the game. If you find yourself in the same stage as I am because you're in one of the late servers, then absolutely, like I said, consider opening up more of those soul stone slots. Uh, and shifting your focus from food gathering, from buying profit orbs to buying heroic scrolls. Thanks for watching as always, guys. And I hope you're staying safe in this very strange world. Thanks for watching.